Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the data center filter based forwarding service leaves learning byte. All right, so here is our topology. Uh, we have a few different devices. We have the two router leaves, that's router L1 and router L2. And then we have the service leaf, which is service L1. Now there are other learning bytes that discuss that I've done uh, the, of the configuration of router L1 and router L2. And there will be another learning byte that goes over the configuration of the DC firewall. So look out for that as well. And uh, there'll also be another learning byte that goes over verification of filter-based forwarding in a data center. Okay, so with that, we wanna focus on configuring the service leaf. We need to configure the service leaf with the inspect VRF and the secure VRF and all the parameters that go along with that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of the service leaf, service L1, and get this going. All right, so here is our topology. And here you can see that service leaf one in the middle here has both the inspect VRF and the secure VRF. And so right now we're going to focus on configuring the inspect VRF, and then we'll configure the secure VRF. And again, what's going to happen is host one will send traffic. It'll filter base forward from VRF one to the inspect VRF, to service leaf, service L1, inspect VRF, and then it'll go to the firewall and then back to the secure VRF on the service leaf, and then to the secure VRF on the router, router L2 leaf, then to VRF1, and then to the host two. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back to the CLI of service leaf L1 and get this going. All right, so here is service leaf L1. Jump into configuration mode. And the first thing we want to do is we want to configure the interface that is facing the firewall. And so let's go into the interfaces. This is going to be XE-0-0-6. And we need to set this up as a trunk interface. And we need to apply two different VLANs here. And the reason behind that is the firewall interface is going to be using VLAN tagging and it's going to have one interface split into two different interfaces, two different logical interfaces. And one of those is going to be a part of one VLAN and it's going to be a part of the secure zone. And the other interface will be a part of the inspect zone and that will receive the traffic and then send it out to the other interface. And so they'll be part of different VLANs. So we need to set some VLAN uh, members here. And so we'll say VLAN members 991 and 992. This matches up uh, with the VNI and the route targets we're using for the secure and the inspect VRFs. And so you can see that we have that configured. And then let's go ahead and we'll also want to configure some IRB interfaces. We'll set unit 991, family INET address. And of course, this is going to be working within the 991 VLAN. So 10.91.91.2 slash 30. And we'll set unit 992. Figure this 10.92.92.2 slash 30. And then we'll set, or rather, let's take a quick look at those. We can see that's configured correctly. And then let's configure some loopback addresses as well. So we'll say, or loopback interfaces, unit 991. And then we'll do the same. 992, and these will be in the different routing instances. And then we want to configure the VLANs. VLAN V991 is going to have VLAN ID 991. And then we're going to have the L3 interface, IRB.991. And then V992 VLAN is going to have VLAN ID 992 and L3 interface, IRB.992. So that's how the interfaces or the VLANs are configured. And then let's jump into the routing instances. And you see here we have nothing configured and keep in mind we're configuring the inspect VRF and the secure VRF. And that is, we are not going to configure VRF1 here. VRF1 is not part of the service leaf. And so with that, let's go ahead and configure the inspect VRF, and it's going to be instance type VRF. We're going to use interface IRB.991. Recall that interface is a part of 
VLAN V991, which uses VLAN ID 991. And then we're also going to put the loopback interface in there. And again, it's not necessary with these loopback interfaces, but it is nice to verify that these are being passed around correctly. Specify the route distinguisher. Remember, these need to be unique. And the end of that route distinguisher is going to match the VNI with what we're using here. And we'll configure the VNI in just a little bit. Figure the route target. And recall that the route target in the inspect VRF here needs to match the route target in the inspect VRF on the router leaf, router L1. And so there's the configuration for that. And we're not done yet though. We need to configure BGP because what happens here is we're going to be getting some, well, passing BGP routes, the EVP routes to BGP to the firewall and then receiving some BGP routes as well. That's how we're going to handle the routing and get the routes back and forth. So edit protocols, BGP, call this group DC-FW-inspect since it's going to be a part of the inspect VRF. And say external export. We have not configured this export policy yet, but we will configure it soon. And we're going to local AS. This is going to be our local AS for this VRF. And then the neighbor, this is going to be the SRX, the DC firewall. So there's actually going to be two BGP sessions with the DC firewall. And we can see here the configuration. We haven't configured that export policy yet. And this export policy, we recall that with these, the router leaves, we are sending uh, static routes and direct routes into eVPN as type 5 eVPN routes. And so we're, that means on the inspect VRF and the secure VRF, we're going to see receive those routes as type 5 EV, eVPN routes. And so what we need to do when configuring this export policy, the firewall or the FW eVPN export policy is we need to match on those eVPN, EVPN routes and export them. And so let's go ahead and configure that policy now. And we're just going to say term eVPN from protocol eVPN. And we're going to accept that. That's all we need to do for that. And let's jump back to the routing instance. And so you can see that's taken care of there. Now we need to configure what we're going to export into the inspect VRF. Because what's going to happen here is we're going to receive a default route from the DC firewall. And we're going to export that default route into the inspect VRF. And then that way, the leaf route or the router leaf, router L1, will know that, okay, to get to host two, I've got a default route. I'm just going to send it to well, service leaf L1. And so with that, let's go ahead and configure that then. So edit protocols, eVPN, and then set IP prefix routes. We're going to do the direct hop with the advertise again. And then we're going to say encapsulation VXLAN and VNI 5991. And this VNI, of course, matches what we have on router leaf, router L1 in the inspect VRF. And then we're going to specify an export. And this has not been configured yet. We're just going to call this T5 underscore export. And then so we have that configured. But we need to configure that policy, right? So let's go ahead and jump to the policy options hierarchy. And make sure I spelt that right. I've messed that up before. And so what we want to do, we want to set one term from protocol direct. We want to export our direct routes, which is just going to be the loopback interface here. And also it's going to be the loopback interface and the IRB interfaces, I guess, are the addresses associated with that. And then with term two, we want to match on a route filter zero slash zero exact. So that's that default route that is going to be coming from the firewall and accept it. And so that is the configuration for the inspect VRF on the service leaf. All right, so here is the topology and we are currently working on service leaf L1. We've already configured router L1 with the inspect VRF. We've configured 
router L2, that leaf, you know, router L1 is also a route, it's, it's a normal router leaf, and router L2 is a normal router leaf. We configured the secure VRF, and we've configured the inspect VRF already, so that's going to match up with the inspect VRF with router L1 leaf. And now we need to configure the secure VRF, which will match up with the secure VRF in router L2. And so here we have VNI5992 on both of them. That'll need to match. And also the route target that we configure will need to match. And so let's go ahead and jump back to the CLI of service L1, which is our service leaf, and configure this. All right, so here is a service leaf L1. Let's go ahead and jump to the routing instance is, and you can see here we have the inspect VRF configured. So let's configure the secure VRF. The instance type is going to be VRF, of course. And we're gonna specify the interface, RB.992. We've already configured that to interface. And then specify the interface of loopback.992. Now the IRB interface, now I didn't explain this when we configured the inspect VRF earlier. That's going to be the anchor point for the BGP pairings with the DC firewall device. And so that's why it's important in this VRF. And so let's configure the route distinguisher. Of course, this needs to be unique. And the 992 matches the VNI configuration that we'll have to configure here in just a moment. Well, it's a uh, 5992 is the, the VNI, but it's based off that. That is, doesn't necessarily match it, but it's based off of it. And then we need to set the route target. And it is also based on the route target too, I guess, in the 992. So, but the thing to keep in mind here is that the route target in the secure VRF here matches the route target in the secure VRF on router leaf, router L2. So you can see the configuration there with what we currently have configured. So let's go ahead and configure the BGP group. And this will appear with the firewall because what's going to happen is it'll, the firewall is acting in this scenario as a one arm firewall. More than likely in a real data center, you'd have multiple firewalls, but here it's just a one arm firewall. So it's going to leave on the one IRB interface in the inspect zone, hit the firewall, come back, and then come back on the one IRB interface in the secure VRF. And so we need to configure two different BGP groups for that. And so let's get to the group now. And so this is going to DC FW dash secure and it's going to be type external and we're going to export that fwevp and export policy and recall we configured this earlier but let's take a quick look and we can see here what we're doing here is we're taking from protocol evpn and then accepting it so we're going to export anything that's evpn and the reason why we need to do that is in the secure vrf we will be receiving a route that is originally a static route from the leaf router L2 in EVPN. And we need to get that to the firewall device so the routing can be propagated correctly. And so with that, we need to configure a few more BGP parameters, local AS 265999. And this is, of course is going to be different than the local AS we have in the inspect VRF uh, BGP group. So keep that in mind, that is different. The neighbor 92.92.1 PRS 64.999. That's going to be the peer information for the DC firewall. And so that is configured there. And so then we need to edit the EVPN parameters. And this is going to be what we're doing with the type five routes, how we're going to export that. And we're going to advertise with the direct next hop. We're going to say encapsulation VXLAN. And we're going to say VNI, VNI, here we go, 5992. And of course, that's going to match the VNI in the other secure VRF that's on router leaf, router L2. And then we need to specify the export policy. And we have this export policy already configured because it was configured earlier. T5 export. Now let's look at that policy. And it's matching on protocol direct, so it's going to export the IRB interface route and also the loopback interface route. And then also the default route that we're getting from the firewall, we're going to export that into EVPN as a type five route. And that is the configuration 
for the service leaf. So let's commit and quit to apply that configuration and exit to operational mode. So that does bring us to the end of this learning guide. And here we demonstrated how to configure the service leaf with regards to data center filter based forwarding. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.